This is the coolest thing anybody has ever done. Check this out. Welcome to the captain's ready room. <laughs> That's not it. That's not it. Look, look, look. Yes! Yes! The coolest thing that's ever happened. The watch. <laughs> so you've got yourself an Amazon Alexa, right? And Captain Space Muppet himself, Jeff Bezos, has stolen every single smart home idea from the market possible and implemented it into the Amazon Alexa ecosystem just for you. Except for a decent presence sensor so that you could just automate your routines as you walked into a room, just like I've shown you on this show before. To me though, this is Darth Vader levels of incompetence. If the Rebels have obtained a complete technical readout of this station, it is possible, however unlikely, that they might find a weakness and exploit it. He, listen, that, what he, that, that he just said, I, I suspect that will be important later. Listen mate, I've told you before, it's only a little bloody hole. Your mum's got a tiny hole. You heard me, your mum. Yeah, your mum's... Your mum. So instead, we're reliant on companies such as Akara to make you a decent presence sensor instead, and this is the most accurate, cost-effective one that I've tried so far. This isn't a typical motion sensor that is watching for movement. Just like its older brother, the FP2, the FP1E is scanning your room to see if humans are in it using MM Wave technology, which is basically radar. But unlike the Akara FP2, it's actually substantially cheaper. If you're currently using a traditional PIR motion sensor, then dump it now, harder than Marty McFly dumped Jennifer as a bad plot device. Jennifer's here, we're gonna take the new truck for a spin. Well, bring it along. This concerns her too. A few moments later. Here's our exit! <laughs> Kills can't time travel. Thanks to Akara for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their Akara FP1E presence sensor. Unlike the FP2, this thing is Zigbee based and in some ways has slightly cut down functionality, but it has at least one potential improvement which we'll talk about shortly. Just like the FP2, it can be used to start Akara based routines within Akara's own ecosystem, but more importantly, it can be used in Apple HomeKit to start routines there and of course in Amazon Alexa to start routines there too, and it really is easy to achieve something as awesome as this. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. All I had to do was create an Alexa routine that says when there is presence in the room, turn on my various smart home lights and play the Star Trek theme on Spotify. Getting the TV to then play a YouTube video was slightly more complicated because it involves Home Assistant. Bespoke configuration dot yaml fires. The new FP1E uses the same AI algorithms as the FP2 does, which means that it should only trigger when it sees humans. None of this whole triggering because a curtain moved or because a robovac was running. This should only trigger when there are people in the room. Does it work? Let's find out. So the big difference between the FP1E and the FP2, other than the price tag, is the simple fact that this one is just kind of plug and play. It just works. It just works! Is that joke getting old? Let me know in the comments and I'll ignore you and include it next week. <laughs> you basically just leave the room and press a button in the app to show the sensor what an empty room should look like. And then it will use artificial intelligence to do the rest. There isn't a single other setting other than the ability to choose how far of a distance it should be looking for people. Once it was set up, I tried to trick it by leaving large human shaped objects in the room and an assortment of mirrors. But no matter what it did, this thing did exactly what it was supposed to do and carried out its routine as soon as I left the room. I'd set it to automatically turn the room off as I left, and that's exactly what it did. Positioning of the sensor though was tricky. It took a little bit of trial and error. It's best positioned in the corner of the room so it can see as much of the room as humanly possible, but I had to kind of wiggle it about a bit and it took a few times, but eventually I got it so that it could recognize if I was sat at my desk, 
just as well as if I was sat on my sofa and it does capture me as I enter the room. This room is 24 meters square and it captures all of this room quite easily. I haven't even got it in the best vantage point. I think if it was higher up and right in the corner, it would do a much better job. It basically needs the high ground. Have you, have you ever thought what that scene might look like with clown music? I have, so I made this. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! Don't try it! Akara have actually made some really good improvements to the AI recently. I found with the FP2, even that thing had some issues now and then when it came to mirrors being... I had a door on my wardrobe, if I left it open it sometimes got confused. The AI seems to have resolved that, and I can actually hide behind my sofa, and it still knows I'm in the room, which is really clever. <laughs> First of all, it's Zigbee based and not Wi-Fi, which is great. It means that it's not clogging up your Wi-Fi network, but it does mean that you need an Akara Zigbee gateway to make it work. As I have said previously on many occasions, this is an Akara Zigbee gateway. Rather ridiculously, so is this sexy voiced cat. Normal link confirmed. <laughs> Stupid sexy cat. Secondly, as I said earlier, the Akara FP2 is like the big brother to this thing. The reason being is that the Akara FP2 does this amazing thing where it can tell exactly where you are in 3D space and trigger routines based on which segment you walk into. This is genius and it is my favorite thing in the whole universe. The FP1E has all of the same abilities for if you enter a room, but you can't segment the room up. It only knows how far away from the sensor you are, it doesn't know where you are in 3D space. Basically the no frills version of the FP2. And if you were in the UK in the 1990s, allow me to hit you in the childhood. Quick save, cutting the cost of shopping. The FP1E is slightly deeper than the FP2, but just like Justin Bieber, it has a small face. Oh, darkness, my old friend. I think the only other thing is there's no light sensor in the FP1E like there is in the FP2. Just to elaborate on that, the FP2 can have routines where you say, if the light is below a certain level and I enter the room, then turn the lights on. If the light is above a certain level and I enter the room, do nothing. You can't do this with the FP1E, but if you're using it in something like Home Assistant or Apple HomeKit, you could add to the routine things like, if the sun has gone down or if it is after a certain time at night. The one caveat I will add here is that the Amazon Alexa routines don't have the ability for sundown, at least not in the UK. Uh, perhaps Jeff Bezos doesn't think we have a sun. I, I mean, he's right. Blah. As with every review, it doesn't matter if I am sponsored or not, this entire section is devoted to all the things it could do better so you can make an informed choice. And the first one is, it has to be wired in, it, it, it has no battery, and it's hardwired. If you were hoping to put this thing right in the top corner of your room, and you were hoping it was battery powered, tough tits. I've personally found it really easy to find locations where I can actually get this thing plugged in and hide the cable just using a tiny bit of trunking. It is barely noticeable, people don't even know it's there. But what I will say is, the FP2 wasn't hardwired, you actually plugged the USB cable in. This thing is hardwired and I think this was a mistake. Wired for me personally is fine, hardwired... Uh, why did you do that, Akara? Akara. 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 I don't personally mind cabling these things in, I just think hardwiring it into the unit was a bit of a mistake, because if the cable dies, so does the unit. I was strongly hoping that because this is a Zigbee based device, I would be able to connect it directly to my Home Assistant instance via my combi stick. Home Assistant does find it. Oh, hello. Hello. 
it just doesn't know what it is. Very soon, undoubtedly, someone will create a driver for it for Home Assistant and it will work directly in there. But whether or not they're going to be able to get access to the little button that says scan the area for humans so it can actually train itself to your room is another matter. This could mean that even though it might work with Home Assistant in the future directly, you might still need to borrow somebody's Akara Zigbee Hub just so that you can do the setup for your room. I don't know, I'm speculating. To make sure though that I am being 100% clear, if you do have an Akara Zigbee based hub, you can use this thing in Home Assistant. It works that way as long as it's got something to talk to in the middle. That is awesome because I like that. I, 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 my virginity grew back some time ago. Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant. This is an awesome little addition to the Akara lineup because it would cost substantially more money to fill a house with the Akara FP2 than it would with the FP1E. And the accuracy is still absolutely spot on since the improvements to their AI were implemented. The FP2 is still the best choice if money is no object because of the additional functionality that I've mentioned. But if you're looking to do one room at a time in your house, 50 quid is easily affordable to get some real automation in there. And currently, there's a link in the description right now and a 20% discount code. I don't think that'll last forever, so go and check that. Um, to give you these things for 40 quid. 40 quid a piece to get your room done is seriously, it's worth it. It means you don't have to use your face hole anymore. This has been a video brought to you by these incredible people. They are my patrons from Patreon. And I know I say it every week, but without them, I wouldn't be sat here. I'd be working in a call center somewhere. If you want to be one of those incredible people, I'm thanking one every week. This week it's Johnny Farmer. Johnny, I am thanking because he gave me some of the most important fatherly advice on Patreon recently that I could have ever have received, and I can't thank him enough. If you want to be like Johnny or any of these guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And by the way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Xs and my Threads and my Instagrams and my TikToks. Come and hang out there and can be best friends. See you next time. But it does mean that you need an... Oh, yeah. <laughs>